Hey there, Lickin' Riffers! Welcome back to another awesome guitar lesson here on Lickin' Riff, in which I'm going to show you how to add fingerstyle-like solos over your rhythm guitar playing, okay? With a pick or a plectrum, okay? How you can add solos over any chord progression to make it sound a lot more interesting. Something like this. Connecting chords in interesting ways, something like this even, with barred chords. Okay? And you can even use it in a bluesy setting. Okay, blues country. And it also works in Latin music as well. Okay, so this is actually a pretty simple concept and it's the same concept in everything I just showed you. Okay, but before we get to that, I want to remind you that there are now two weekly lessons here on Lake and Riff. Two weekly guitar lessons made possible thanks to you, my wonderful, wonderful audience um, and the kind people who support me on Patreon and the kind people who purchase my courses, my Complete Guitar Freedom course series. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And if this is news to you that I have a Patreon page um, and that I have courses, the Complete Guitar Freedom course series, check the links in the description and go check them out. So thank you in advance. So. Um, two weekly lessons and solos over rhythm guitar. So um, the concept here is to play the solo in between down strums. Okay, the soloing is done on the up strum. Okay, and to show you what I mean, uh, let's take the Latin example that I showed you. So we had E minor and A minor. Okay. And for both of them, I played, okay, zero, two, three, two, and repeat uh, on the first string. So, okay, and same thing on E minor, okay, which creates something like this. Okay, this is actually what you hear when I play this. because the notes from the chords complete the solo. So the solo lick actually connects the chords. So I'm playing, okay? Just one, two, three, and four, and. Okay, down, 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 up, down, up. Okay? And I'm trying to give a, a sense of dynamic here. I'm not picking all the strings all the time. I pick the bass strength and then the rest of the chord okay and then i pick the bass string and then the rest of the chord so um it's a dynamic sort of thing that enables the solo to shine okay so when i play the solo okay i play okay i play it on the up strum Okay? And I want to play the rest of the solo with it, but the main note that I'm picking is the first string. Okay? And I pick a little outward, so this note, okay, these notes, this succession of notes is stronger than the accompanying notes of the chord. Okay? That is very, very important. Okay? You want to accentuate the solo. So if you pick it upwards, what do you do in between? You pick the chord. So you get this. Okay? And then you get this. Bass chord. And then. Okay? And when I pick the chord, when I strum downwards, I just brush the strings. I don't I don't hit them. I just brush them. 
Okay, and then I do the same thing with A minor. Okay, bass chord. Okay, and then again, E minor. Okay, so this is the concept. You play the chord, and then when you want to make a transition into the next one, you play a little bit of a solo, just a couple of notes, and then the open string leads you to the next chord. That's the concept. Another example would be what I played with G and C, which would be... is the same concept exactly. Exactly. It doesn't matter what rhythm you're playing. Now, this is actually simpler, okay? If I, pick, uh, if I pick it in a swing setting, okay, then it's just down strums, and so is the solo, okay? And then I just go to the next chord. I want you to pick the chord along with the solo. This is the technique that I'm trying to show you. It's a more complicated technique, okay? And more impressive that way. So, okay, we're in G, okay? So we have one, three, one, zero on the second string, and then we go to C, okay? So, okay, so again, it's up strum, chord, up strum, chord, up strum, chord, same thing, up strum, chord, up strum, and then the next chord is C. Okay? And you can leave the open string because it's C major 7. Okay? You, you can close it with one on the, the second string and play a full C chord. Okay? But... Okay? Now what happens if you want to complete the solo and play the second string? Okay? So it has this. Okay? So you have this. Okay. What happens if you want to complete the solo? Okay. Then you will have to accentuate the second string, the, the, sorry, the third string as well. Okay, and then, that's right, the third string. So what are you going to do? You're going to do this. Okay, you're going to play the third string as an up strum and then play the bass of the chord. This will give you a sort of a syncopation feel to your playing. Okay, and then you get this. Okay, you see? Doesn't detract anything. It's still the same chord progression, but now it's music. Now it's musical. See what I mean? So it's the same concept, and it's the same concept with barred chords as well. If you have A minor, okay, and D minor 7, for example, which is A minor, bar on 5, E minor shape, and bar on 5, A minor shape without the little finger, okay, which is D minor 7. And you need the little finger to solo, okay, over 5, 7, and 8 on the first string. It's the same thing as E minor and A minor, Exactly the same thing. Okay? And then... It's the same thing exactly as we did here. Okay? Only with a bar. So you see, it can work. It can work anywhere you decide you want it to work. Okay? And it's the same thing with the A minor and C chords. Okay? Now with a C chord, it's a little bit harder. Okay? Because you need to let go of the bass string. Okay? Okay? Let's say we're on five. We have a bar on five. Okay? So we can do... Okay, one zero one on the second string, and then 
the three on the second string, okay, I'm talking about the bar as zero. Okay, if the bar is your zero fret, then you have, okay, one, zero, one, three. If this is confusing for you, just think about it as six, five, six, eight, okay? Okay, because I want to show you that it's the same thing as doing it here. Okay, so if you do it with a bar, okay, just don't play the fifth string and then, then play the fifth string as your bass or the next chords bass note. So, okay, okay. Now, um, if you're wondering what I did there with A minor, it's the same thing. I just picked the third string to accentuate the solo. That's all I did. I did C, one, zero, one, three, and then G, one, zero, one, three, and then Okay, I played the open second string and then the two on the third string with A minor. The same thing. Okay, with two on the third string. Okay, I accentuated that. And you can do it before the chord. Okay, you can move into A minor before the first beat of A minor. So, okay, and then you get this, okay? One, zero, one, zero, and then two on the third string, and then the A minor bass, okay? That's right, you need to work on it, you need to practice. The, the cat doesn't like to practice. Okay, now the blues thing that I was talking about that's a bit more advanced uh, because you need to stretch G. Don't know if this was the best example actually uh, for a blues line, but it's an example. So okay? you can stretch, you can play three on the bass and then you have seven on the first string. And then six, five. Okay, and of course, up strong and you pick the chord. Okay, the open second, third and fourth string. C7, okay, with an up strong. Okay, so. Okay, so the chord actually produces a kind of syncopation anticipation thing. So. Okay, got it? So, this is basically the same concept all around. It's the same concept all around. No matter what you choose to play, you can play the solo in the low notes as well, but it's the same thing. Uh, for example, you can do... Okay? So it's the same thing. Two zero on strings three and four on a G chord. Up strums. Okay, and I play the bass strings after each up strong. See? As long as you play the chord in between your solos, then it sounds like you're playing two guitars. That's a really nice flat picking technique that you kind of need to know if you want to translate finger style stuff into rhythm guitar stuff. So uh, thank you very much for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I will see you the next lesson. Bye for now. Thank you.